Welcome to the May edition of What's in Bloom at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. Each month we put together an assortment of plants that are in bloom in that particular month, and we make a sheet that we hand out to all our visitors uh, listing those plants. And this time of the year, there's really a lot of competition to make it on that sheet because there's so many things in bloom. Uh, you can see the glorious uh, Yucca carnarosana behind me. Uh, there's a lot going on right now. But let's have a look at this month's What's in Bloom. Pensamen is a large genus in the Plantagenaceae. Now, they used to be in the Scrofulariaceae, but family realignments have put them in a new family arrangement, and so now they're in Plantagenaceae. But this is a big group of plants with spectacular flowers. There are some that grow in wetter places that are not adapted to a dry garden, but there are desert pensamens like this one, Pensamen spectabilis, that come from the desert and do really well with low water. And this is really looking spectacular right now, uh, Pensamen spectabilis. This plant is Mangave Mayan queen. So a Mangave is a cross between a Manfreda and an Agave. Manfredas and Agaves are closely related to each other, but Agaves generally have rigid permanent leaves and Manfredas soft flexible leaves, sometimes deciduous. But they're very closely related to each other. Some people consider that Manfreda should be included within Agave. But in any case, there has been a lot of crossing between the two groups in recent years, uh, especially by Hans Hansen, who was the creator of this particular plant. And so he um, has released a bunch of his uh, crosses and they've made their way into the market. And this one is called Mayan Queen. So like all uh, agaves and manfredas, the rosette is monocarpic. In other words, it only blooms once. And so here it is in flower. That's the end of that rosette. However, it will make pups from the side and so the plant will continue after the bloom. Mangave Mayan Queen. This plant is Fremontodendron Ken Taylor. So a common name for Fremontodendron is flannel bush because the leaves have a fuzzy texture like flannel. Uh, and they are native to California and southward into Baja, California. So this particular cultivar, Ken Taylor, is a very low one, wider than tall. And it has these beautiful, large, white, I mean, uh, yellow flowers and uh, really going to town at this time of the year. Um, it used to be in the family uh, Sterculiaceae, but that whole family has been moved into the Malvaceae. When we have these changes, it's because new evidence of the relationship to plants changes the way we classify them. So it's not we're trying to confuse everybody, it's that uh, evidence has caused us to reevaluate how they should be placed. So the entire Sterculiaceae, which was known to be close to the Malvaceae, is now included within the Malvaceae. So now it's a hibiscus family relative. Uh, in any case, the beautiful yellow flowers, uh, characteristic of Fremontodendron, and this one is Fremontodendron Ken Taylor. Dudleya is a genus in the Crassula family from Western North America. They range from Oregon in the north to Baja California in the south, with lots of them found along the coast of California. This particular one is Dudleya brittoni, and it comes from near Tijuana uh, in northern Baja California, just across the border from San Diego. Uh, it's notable for its very large, beautiful chalky white rosettes. And at this time of the year, the flower stalks come out with little tiny uh, greenish yellow flowers. The plant itself is perhaps more spectacular than the flowers, but the flowers are like icing on the cake. Dudleya brittoni. This plant is Trichostema linatum with the common name woolly blue curls. And if you look at the little uh, purpley blue flowers with their curly cues, you can see how it got that name. It's a California native and belongs to the mint family, Lamiaceae. Uh, truly a spectacular plant and uh, very well adapted to our climate here in California since it comes from here. And uh, it is a difficult plant to move, uh, but once established, it's a, a pretty carefree plant and really looking beautiful right now in the garden, Trichostema linatum. Yuccas are iconic plants of the southern United States, ranging all the way from the Carolinas to California and also southward into Mexico. Uh, there are lots of species, some of them stemless and some uh, tall trunk forming plants. This one is Yucca neo-Mexicana, named after the state of New Mexico. 
and it is one of the ones that's trunkless, or at least basically trunkless. And uh, it's got, uh, it turned into a big patch here in the Bancroft Garden, got lots of stalks coming up, uh, not quite in flower yet as we uh, film this video, but we'll include pictures of the open flowers for you to see along with that. Um, it's a, a bluish yucca and uh, really a wonderful garden plant if you have the space for it. Yucca neo-mexicana. The beaver tail cactus, Opuntia basilaris, is really looking wonderful right now with these beautiful magenta flowers. It doesn't uh, occur on our what's in bloom list because the flowers are pretty short lived, but it's so wonderful I thought I'd just insert this in here so you can appreciate the wonderful beaver tail cactus, Opuntia basilaris. The kangaroo paws are Australian members of the family Hemodoraceae, and they are just wonderful, wonderful plants. This one is Anagazanthos manglesii, or manglesii, depending on how you want to pronounce it, and it comes from Western Australia. They call them kangaroo paws because their little arching tubular flowers are fuzzy and uh, reminded somebody of the paw of a kangaroo. Uh, but this one has just such an extraordinary combination of brilliant scarlet at the base of the flower and green on the tube of the flower, and then a little bit of pale green where the tip of the flower peels back to show off the yellow stamens. It's just a magnificent plant that deserves to be seen by everybody, even though it doesn't grow well in places that don't have a Mediterranean climate like ours. Anagazanthos manglesii. This is Alloburii. It's a, a South African aloe related to Allostriata, the coral aloe, but actually, much rarer in habitat in South Africa, but it does very well for us here in California because it also comes from a winter rainfall climate like ours. Alloburii. Leucosperms belong to the family Proteaceae, the Protea family, and they come from South Africa. Their common name is pincushions, and that's because these long styles that stick out uh, give it a look of a pincushion. So uh, this is actually a flower cluster, not a single flower. There's many, many little tiny flowers uh, here in the cluster, each one of them having one long red style that sticks out that provides the pins in the pin cushion. Uh, this one is a cultivar named Blanche Ito, and it was developed in Hawaii. Uh, but it shows a lot of influence from one of its parents, and that is Leucospermum reflexum, the red rocket uh, pin cushion from South Africa. And it really is having a great year this year with all these beautiful flower clusters. Leucospermum blanch ito. This plant is a bromeliad named Puya alpestris. So Puya is uh, a genus in the bromeliad family, and uh, they're all from South America, basically following the Andes from Argentina and Chile in the south up to Colombia in the north. And uh, in Chile, they could be quite close to the ocean because the Andes are not far from the ocean there. Uh, but there are many, many species, uh, and this is typical of them in having these long sword-like leaves with sharp teeth along the edges. But what's not typical of this plant is its extraordinary flowers. Now, as we film this, the flowers are not quite open yet, but you can see the club coming out of the clump that will have the incredible turquoise flowers that characterize Puya alpestris. Pelargonium is a big genus in the geranium family. And in fact, florists often refer to pelargoniums as geraniums, even though they're a separate genus in the same family. Uh, but they've been much hybridized and there are many wonderful ones uh, for sale in nurseries. And some of them like this one have very fragrant leaves. We don't have a cultivar name on this one, but you can see these beautiful pink flowers with uh, a red eye on the upper two petals. Uh, it's a, a long blooming plant with very nicely dissected leaves and uh, a beautiful scent as well. Uh, Pelagonium hybrid. Aeoniums are plants in the stonecrop family or the crassula family, and most of them come from the Canary Islands. Not all, I've seen aeoniums actually in the wild in Ethiopia, but most of them from the Canary Islands, including almost all the ones we see commonly in cultivation. 
Well, one of the species is Aeonium simsii, which is a very short plant with beautiful bright yellow flowers. And this is a hybrid of Aeonium simsii, uh, similarly low and with bright yellow flowers, but not quite as small as the real simsii. Uh, in any case, in spectacular bloom right now, Aeonium simsii hybrid. Aloes belong to the asphodel family and many of the ones commonly grown in California come from South Africa, which is home to a lot of species. But this one is from much farther afield. This one is Aloe Scholari from Eritrea on the coast of the Red Sea. So uh, it's not commonly seen in cultivation. It's got a very unusual flower color, this very uh, pale, pale orange color, uh, and it really making a very dense spike with lots and lots of flowers. Aloe Scholari. Dickia is a genus in the bromeliad family, and they come from Argentina and northward into Uruguay, Paraguay, and southern Brazil. So uh, different bromeliads have different colored flowers, but the Dickias are always in the yellow to orange range. And this one is Dickia encalerioides with bright orange flowers. Uh, and uh, it forms a clump of rosettes that gets bigger and bigger over time. So this one's got a lot of heads on it by now and consequently, lots of flower stalks that come up when it blooms. Dickia and Calerioides. Yuccas are plants from North America that used to be placed in the agave family. They are related to the agaves, but now the whole agave family has been put into the asparagus family. So now we're uh, talking about yucca in the asparagus family. In any case, this is a genus that comes from the southern United States and southward all throughout Mexico. And Mexico has some of the largest and most spectacular yuccas, including this one. This is yucca filifera. And it comes from a big swath of eastern Mexico. Uh, and although our plant's pretty darn big, it's not as big as they can get. I saw one in Michoacan that had a door where you could walk through the trunk and come out the other side. So that is what I would call a big yucca filifera. In any case, the flowers on yucca filifera come out and then hang down instead of going up like most other yuccas. So it's unique in that respect. Yucca filifera. Eriogonum is a genus in the Polygonaceae, and uh, California has more species than anywhere else, uh, uh, really a great number going all the way from the seashore to the high Sierra. And this one is a spectacular plant with very pale felted leaves and bright yellow green flowers. This is Eriogonum crocatum. Plants in the cactus family are all from the Americas, uh, some from North America, like the Southwest United States and Mexico, and some from South America. Uh, this one here is Cleistocactus hyalacanthus from the Andes in South America. And it's a really wonderful plant because these uh, vertical columns with very long spines give it a kind of a fuzzy look and has these wonderful little uh, tubular flowers that stick out from the plant. Now you might think that's not an open flower, but that is. That's a tubular flower that holds nectar that a hummingbird inserts its beak into and extracts the nectar out of. And uh, so cacti don't make it on what's in bloom very much because their blooms are, are so often short-lived. But this plant makes a lot of bloom over a long enough period of time that here it is on our what's in bloom list. Pleistocanctus hyalacanthus. Flomus is a genus in the mint family, Lamiaceae, and this one is Flomus fruticosa, which comes from the Mediterranean. Now, obviously we have a Mediterranean climate here in California as well, so it's very well suited to our climate. And we really like it because of the way that it comes up with these whorls of flowers, and then a little bit of stem, another whorl of flowers uh, stacked up, and uh, lots of beautiful bright yellow flowers in each whorl. Flomus fruticosa. Aeoniums are plants in the stonecrop family or the crassula family, and mostly they come from the Canary Islands. They uh, are very popular as garden plants here in California, but this one is not so commonly encountered, and it's a very special plant for us because this is the very first succulent that Ruth ever got when she was uh, collecting plants before she ever started the Ruth Bancroft Garden. And uh, so its name is Aeonium Glenn Davidson, after the woman from whom Ruth got it. And you can see the uh, flowers have white petals and a kind of a pinkish tinge to the flower stalk. And it's in flower right now, Aeonium Glenn Davidson. 
Agaves uh, used to be in their own family, Agavaceae, but now have been put into the asparagus family. Maybe that's a little bit appropriate because the emerging stock kind of looks like an asparagus shoot. Uh, some agaves are very large uh, and uh, imposing plants, but this one, agave mitis, is on the small side. It starts out as a single rosette, but after it blooms, it makes new heads from out between the leaves and gets to be a bigger and bigger clump over time. So this one has been in the garden for many, many years and has become a large clump with many heads and consequently, when, it, when springtime comes and the bloom season comes along, there are lots of flowers to be seen. It's also nice because the flower stalks are shorter than most agaves, so you can get right up close and see the flowers. Uh, agave Midas. To my mind, there are few plants more spectacular in flower than Yucca carnarosana. So this is a yucca that comes from West Texas and Northeastern Mexico. Uh, and you can see here how imposing the plant is and then how spectacular that flower is rising out from it. They don't bloom every year, but when they do, it's quite a sight. Yuccas belong to the agave family, uh, agavaceae, which has now been rolled into the asparagus family. So there you have it, Yucca carnarosana. That brings us to the end of our May edition of What's in Bloom at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. But remember, there are so many things in flower in this garden that uh, we had to leave a lot of things out that would uh, have made wonderful additions had we gone on forever with our What's in Bloom list. Uh, there are all sorts of things to see on our website, like our plant highlights, our educational offerings, our workshops and our uh, seminars and so on. And uh, there's all kinds of opportunities for volunteering here at the Ruth Bancroft Garden. So visit our website and uh, see what you can come away with. Thank you very much for coming to our May version of What's in Bloom.